Millions of years ago, dinosaurs roamed the Earth. But what lies buried here is millions of years older than even them. Join us as we go fossil hunting in the Poconos. Hello, I'm Tanner Simon. I'm a historian and an anthropologist, and in my fieldwork, I come across a lot of fossils. Let's take a look today at why they form, how they form, and where they form in the Poconos. Before we begin our search for fossils, we need to understand what a fossil is, how it forms, and where they form. So fossil is a trace or remnant of any living thing, and they form when this organism, it could be a plant or an animal or an insect, bacteria, it dies, and it gets covered by dirt and sediment. And this dirt and sediment compresses into a solid form, like a rock. And the organic material will decompose, leaving a cavity water will flow through the rock and sediment and deposit other materials in there and it'll form a cast in a mold and both parts will make up the fossil. So you have your cavity and the fluid flows in and fills up the gap. And typically when we find a fossil it could, it could be um, just one of the parts because they're very fragile and typically both halves won't make it. These are some of the common fossils we'll see right here in the Poconos and they vary quite vastly. This specimen is from Raymond's Kills Falls. It is a series of Bavalvea fossils that have formed probably as a result of a giant mudslide that came down probably from a cliff or a hillside and it would have covered all of these mussels and shells very quickly. They would have died and formed a fossil. This piece was found in a shallow riverbed, northern Wayne County. Typically, uh, riverbeds will have a lot of fossils. This particular one was definitely formed as a result of a mudslide and it dates about 400 million years ago in the Devonian period. Uh, we can tell that it was formed from a, a mudslide by the sheer volume of fossils in it. This is jammed packed. It's a conglomerate of thousands of small wormholes and shells and some gastropods you can see if you look very closely. Fossils like this can be found in any cliffside or rock cut, but always in shale. It's essentially a conglomerate of prehistoric leaves and ferns and palm leaves, stems that have fallen onto the forest or jungle floor. It dates to about 200 to 300 million years ago during the Pennsylvanian period. The most exciting aspect about learning of fossils is fieldwork. Let's go to some local sites and see what we can find. Our first stop is Pittman Orchard Trailhead at McDade Recreational Trail outside of Milford. Even a popular place like this holds prehistoric secrets. Two large rocks at the entrance show us some clues. This is a cross-section of a fossilized crinoid, an ancestor of starfish and sea cucumbers. Here we see an example of a mineralized worm. And this is part of a leaf or a stick embedded in the rock. We next venture out to deeper woods to explore the base of Tanner's Falls. Wooded environments near long-established rivers make great places to look for fossils. Due to the processes of erosion, fossil-bearing rock gets broken down and carried downstream. Though the area has had a heavy industrial past, it holds many natural secrets and evidence of prehistoric life and vegetation. Many of the trees and plants seen growing in this area are similar to the plants that once lived here. Sometimes, rocks can tell us when fossils are near. This one, for example. Although it is hard to discern what's going on here, Heavy traces of iron oxide, or rust, in sedimentary rock indicates that an organism was once present. Mineralization by iron-rich rock replaces the cavity that the organism lived in, and you get this oxidation that happens after the fact, which makes it too hard to identify now. When looking for fossils, it is important to put back any rocks you disturb. Though they were used to make walls, in these rocks lie records of the forest floor.
Let's take a closer look at this one. Here we see twigs or stems. The comparison helps us discern what we are seeing. Sometimes I don't know exactly what fossil I'm looking at. That's okay. It's important to identify that something is a fossil in the first place. It can always be researched at a later time. It's always a good idea to try different angles of light when identifying a fossil. Even the rocks I am standing on are a great historical record. Take this one for instance. Each shelf on this big rock is a different mineral deposit, made up by erosion, water movement, and shifting sediment. In it, we can see different types of minerals and even some leaf fossils as well. Our last stop for the day is Irving Cliff in Honesdale. Yes, fossils can even be found just outside of town, and there is a rich diversity of them too. Right here we're looking at a couple different colors of rocks in a, a band. This is called stratification, and all that means is that this rock is different than this rock. This is, this is uh, shale, this is limestone and sandstone. So this forms when sediment from a river or a sea settles to the bottom and forms layers. And as you can see, it's quite thick. On top, this is after quite some time, hundreds of thousands of years of dirt and erosion piling up and forming a rock on top of this ancient seabed. So looking at this, we know this is much, much older than the rock on top, simply because of the way they're placed in the processes. This is a great example of sediment buildup forming one giant boulder. The shale that supports it is very dense and supports the harder rock above with strained effort. It erodes faster than the rock above. Now, because shale is made up of essentially compressed and dried mud, it is very fragile, very brittle. So it's very easy to break it, and that means the fossils found in it are very, very, very delicate. More so than the normal rock itself because there's different grooves in it because you see shale is flat, it's in these bands, and any fossil is essentially an anomaly that will cause it to crack and fracture like this. You know, it just kind of crumbles out. You can see I just pulled a rock out of, the, out of the cliff with my hand. You know, it's very weak. Fossilized ferns can be seen in several of the little alcoves on the cliff's face. This fossil here, is gray shale found at the same level as the red shale and uh, it has some very large seashells in it. A few fossils but mainly just seashells. Not that interesting though compared to this slightly newer fossil. I mean I say newer but we're still talking 300 million years old which is a, a playground of seashells and fossils and we have some sponges in it. You can see different shapes everywhere. It's very beautiful and almost scary to look at. There's worm burrows in it, worm holes, uh, back when this was still soot and mud. Incredible. And this would have been uh, layered above this rock here. And then moving on in time to about 200 million years up until, you know, 10 million years ago, we have a fossil of the forest floor. We see some leaves in here, some patterns. And a lot of this is, uh, <laughs> you know, starting to form coal. We see traces of the carbon and it's dark like the coal we find in this region, the anthracite. And this would be layered like this. So we have our mini replica of the cliff right here. The next time you go out for a hike, take a look at some of the rocks and you may just find a little piece of ancient history waiting for you. And if you like Wally Life, please click the subscribe button below.